Well, the reason I got chosen is because they said Magic and Larry are going to speak tonight and nobody else wants to do it. So that's how I got chosen to speak. This is an incredible weekend. I want to thank the city of Springfield and the Basketball Hall of Fame for rolling out the red carpet. It's an honor, unbelievable weekend. I want to acknowledge the 1960 team. Uh, it's been so much fun hanging out with those gentlemen all weekend. It has been some serious, serious trash talking going on. Uh, it has been so much fun, but I got admiration and respect for them because that's something we will share winning a gold medal. I want to congratulate all the inductees. No disrespect to anybody, but Scotty and Mailman, I got really great admiration for those two guys, just as peers and also playing on the 92 Dream Team. So could, please give these guys and ladies a hand. Uh, to, the, to the 1992 team, man, it was, to piggyback on what Mr. West said, when you're standing on that podium and they're playing the National Anthem, you just got chills down your spine. There's nothing I've ever experienced in my life like it. And, you know, everybody know these guys. You can ask Coach Carlissimo and Coach Wilkins. The only person missing is Coach uh, Daly. And we want to remember Coach Daly because he was unbelievable. And to a person on that team, everybody were wonderful guys. Clearly we tried to kill each other during the regular season. But let me tell you something. That time we spent together, it was from being from man to man, I've never had more fun being around anybody. We had fun every day. Everybody got along. There was no ego. We had fun. And that, you know, clearly everybody reminds me I never won a championship. So that to me was like winning the championship, winning the gold medal and hanging out with these guys. And I just, I'm just humbled, us going in as a team. I was humbled going in as an individual. And I just want to personally thank every one of these guys. That was one of the greatest times of my life and I think about it all the time. Thank you guys for coming. To have the assistant coach for the 1992 Dream Team and a great head coach in his own right uh, in the college basketball and professional basketball ranks, Mr. P.J. Carlissimo. Well, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your time and everything. And uh, the 92 Dream Team, I mean, managing 12 rock stars. That's what Coach Chuck Daly uh, called them, 12 rock stars. It was kind of like a whole show, you know. But but they can't, the, the seriousness and the sacrifice they made for their country, talk about how the dyna dynamic and how high that was. Well, I mean, other than uh, the thrill of watching them play basketball, just uh, observing how professional they were and the way they conducted themselves was probably the most impressive thing. I think that uh, from day one, Chuck and uh, Lenny Wilkins, uh, the two pro coaches, Mike Krzyzewski and myself, I mean, we just, Chuck said, this is the way it's going to be, you know, and they parked their egos. They came every day. They practiced hard. They played together. Uh, could not have done a better job in terms of how professional they were, how well they represented the country, and obviously how well they played the game on the court. And you've been a coach for, boy, around uh, definitely three decades, you know, for sure. And, uh, and you started at Wagner College. It's very interesting. Coach Bob Hurley's son, Dan Hurley, is now the new Wagner College coach. So, but, but, but talk about that similarity of, uh, like, starting at Wagner. What were the things you were able to learn to be able to have such a long career and have that long time? Well, you, you learn it's all about players, and I think Chuck understood that, and the players appreciated the way he treated them, and uh, I think any coach, any good coach knows that uh, if you're successful, it means you have very good players, and it's all about the players, and uh, if you can get uh, a group that's willing to you know, put the collective good of the team ahead of their own individual achievements, then you're going to be successful. And that, that's not always easy to do. And uh, again, it goes back to the to the people. And uh, I was fortunate even way back at, uh, at Wagner and uh, had the pleasure of coaching Danny Hurley at Seton Hall. And now to, to see Danny doing as well as he's done in, uh, in, in high school ranks and as well as he and his brother Bobby, I'm sure, are going to do uh, at Wagner, it, it uh, you know, makes me feel proud to be a little part of that. 89 team, Seton Hall.
Wow, I mean, it was great because I, I grew up in New York City, so I'm Big East territory, you know, and I was cheering hard for you, you know, but how the magnitude of that team, uh, how, how does it still resonate to this day? Well, I think that was that was a special group. Again, you had one of those situations similar to what we had in '92. You just we had uh, a group of players, a lot of veteran players, a lot of seniors on that team, and a lot of guys that had been through the tough times. We struggled when they were freshmen and sophomores, and they kept getting better and better every year. And finally, it came together for them. They got to the the NCAA tournament for the first time in 1988, and then in, in '89 they had a about as good a run as you could have. Just came up a, a point short in overtime in a championship game. Say we because you you were like at the helm. You know? Well, it was it, it was it was a great group. It was nice to be a part of. Terry DeHair, coincidentally, undefeated that season with Coach Early. With, with it's Anthony. Oh yeah, no, I remember uh, our assistant coaches were working uh, working the recruiting even during the Final Four, talking to to Terry and, and Jerry Walker, and then ultimately Danny Hurley. We ended up with three uh, St. Anthony's players that were a big part of the future success at Seton Hall. Question your assistant coach now with the Toronto Raptors. Um, you know, losing Chris Bosch, losing Hito Turkoglu. Uh, talk about, you know, how Ed Davis could really come in and, and do some things. And talk about DeR DeMar DeRozan and uh, Sonny Weems having great summer leagues. Can they really take it to the next level? I think they can. I think DeMar DeRozan has really made a lot of progress. He had a very good freshman year. He's had an excellent summer. And he looks like he's really, to, you know, ready to continue that growth. Sonny Weems is, is a talent. He's working on developing his shot. Uh, he's an excellent athlete. He's a very good defender. And uh, as his shot gets better, he's going to be a very very good player in the league we were really happy with ed davis the way he played this summer uh he's a skilled player obviously coming from carolina he knows how to play the two things he can do right now are block shots and rebound and those are really important skills particularly for us you know you mentioned losing a guy like chris bosh to have someone uh like ed davis who's capable of coming in and give us some defense and give us some rebounding that's going to be important for us Sir, I'm gonna let you go i thank right, you for your time thank you, you. honor thank good you. being with you no problem